hello, and welcome to the end of the year list of movies that I saw. <laughs> Things I've learned today, uh, I'm not that cool, and I need to stop. Okay, hello, and welcome to uh, the top 10 holy shit movies of 2018. This is like one of my favorite videos that I get to make every year because it basically allows me to just talk at length about the things that I liked this year, uh, which were a lot of things, and kind of without the filter of having to decide whether or not they're good or bad. I can talk about both. That's not even the criteria. I'm not like making a top 10 uh, list uh, of whatever, trying to rank anything or make anything make some sort of objective sense, which is silly and stupid. And we're not here to do that. Uh, shade Throne, let's talk about some goddamn movies. I liked a lot of stuff this year, uh, tons of stuff even some stuff that you're probably gonna be mad at me for liking. That's okay, I don't care. Who give a heck? So I hope you're strapped in, cause there was a lot of nonsense this year, and oh boy, do I love nonsense. Uh, I despise top 10 lists and end of the year lists, cause most of the time it's taste making. It's people being like, this is the stuff that defines how smart and great I am as a person every year, uh, which I kind of think is just kind of posturing and bullshit, which is not what I'm here to do. I'm not here to posture to you and I'm not here to give you bullshit. I'm here to get hyped about some just stuff. I don't have to use this or anything. I just like it. You think you scared me? No, move. Okay, first things first, uh, the movie Hellfest. I saw the trailer for Hellfest and I was like, hey, that looks like a really cool location. It's a shame that it's just a slasher movie because I wanted it to be like some other greater use of that location. But then I saw the movie and I went, guys, uh, what the hell? It's so good. It's so good. And it like totally blew my mind and it totally didn't have to. Uh, quite a bit of it was just like slasher stuff, but it was like enjoyable to see slasher stuff on the screen again. And it kind of like hit me in waves how we really haven't seen slasher movies, especially ones like this in like a really long time. That was kind of cathartic. But on top of that, the location is really cool. And the end, like the last third of the movie is just sort of an ideological deconstruction of a lot of slasher stuff. And like, uh, gender politics are in there too. It's kind of complicated. There's this one scene where they literally go into hell together and they're like trying to, uh, the, the, that is the, uh, the final girl and the slasher. There's like this scene where they're in this room filled with these white face, like screaming, like, but, the, but they're like mannequins and there's this sort of back and forth uh, where the slasher and the victim both have to take different roles, like as a defender slash attacker, and also like the, the slasher has to defend himself at one point, but it's in this room filled with reflections of like both of them at this one sort of unifying moment. And it also like talks about random acts of violence and like how uh, purposeless and just, ah, there's a lot to it and I need to see it again. And I've been talking about maybe doing an analysis video on it because I really, really liked it. Uh, it would be cool to do that and I might have to do that. Comments are good. Let me know if you liked that idea that I said out loud. You came here to be scared, <laughs> right? I can't arrest people for doing their job. Welcome to Hellfest. <laughs> All right, it is recording. <laughs> no, that's good. Next movie is fucking Venom. Loved Venom. Eyes, lungs, pancreas, so many snacks, so little time. Venom is the trashy 2000s movie that you side eye and go, ah, uh, I don't know. But then you see it and you go, welcome back to the goddamn 2000s. I'm super here for it. I'm aware that like there is a better movie out of this Venom movie. Like uh, there was an R-rated cut and then they cut it down. And even Tom Hardy was like, there's a longer cut that I really, really liked. And then I don't really like this cut. And that's okay. I understand. Uh, I understand that things got cut out and there is maybe a disappointment there with Venom fans, but I'm not disappointed because I don't give a goddamn shit about Venom. I just went there to see 
whatever this was going to be. And the movie credit sequence has an has an Eminem theme song uh, in it. And that should capture everything, really. I mean, that's the majority of the experience. If you can get behind that, you can get behind Venom. Also, it's a movie about disassociation, which is something that I'm like slowly coming to terms with the fact that I totally have. Um, that's a conversation for another day. Venom rules. Let's move on. Oh, I have a parasite. Yeah. There's squirrels running around all behind you. Squirrels? Yeah. Is that what that is? Yeah, little squirrels running around. I heard some like sounds and I was like, who the fuck is this guy? They said you were brutal. I can be. I want you to hurt them. You Were Never Really Here is the new Lynn Ramsey movie. Uh, I saw it early, early, early in the year and it was truly uh, one of the better cinematic experiences I've had in a long time. I really like that movie. I like how most of the violence is shown at a, at a, at a crude distance. Uh, we're not allowed to engage with the violence. It's a like a sort of revenge or vigilante movie uh, that spends most of its time deconstructing that very concept. It's also a movie about like victims actually standing up for themselves, but it's also a movie about how victims often hurt themselves to like reconnect with this pain that doesn't seem to make sense to them. Uh, it's really good. It's really, really good. I love Rin, Lynn Ramsey's movies. Uh, really, really love this one in particular. I mean, I've liked the most of what I've seen of her, but this one was pretty transcendent and I am in love. And that is my, I know that's not like my holy shit reaction. Like you want, you expect me to be like, damn this movie, but like, it was just a beautiful movie. What am I supposed to do? Not every single one of these is gonna be like absolutely wall to wall, just bat shit, sorry. It's okay, Joe. It's okay. You doing a drop? You doing a bit? Assassination Nation was the like first time I think that I've ever seen a trans woman on screen uh, in like that was actually legitimately a trans woman, and uh, I. I was rolling my eyes at the idea of actually sitting through it, and then I actually watched it, and not only did I think that movie was really, really fucking lit, I was connecting with this character on screen more than I'd maybe ever connected with the character, and in that moment it was like all that sort of representative ideas, um, you know, about characters representing something larger than that on screen, and how those things can mean something to us beyond our own sort of preconceptions. Uh, it all kind of hit me and I actually had a pretty profound experience. It gets on the holy shit list because holy shit, I didn't know I could feel that way. And like, I've gone the majority of my life without feeling that way when I connect to people on screen and it's actually been like sort of a, this distancing experience. So actually being there and like not experiencing that distance, trust me when I say, I believe you can connect with just about any character on screen because we all empathetically are human in the same way. But like seeing someone legitimately have your experience is quite something else. And Assassination Nation did that. Even if you dislike the movie, that nugget of the thing like is always gonna be with me. And that's powerful. You may kill me, but she can't kill us all. We've sent in drones and teams of people, but nothing comes back. Annihilation, uh, who, I don't even know. Um, Dan Olson has a great video about Annihilation. You should watch it because it was like, basically my take on the movie is like the same as his, uh, where it's like very much an abstraction to talk about like the idea of the suicide mission or what it even means to be suicidal uh, or or even the kind of weird poetry of of, self-destruction, I don't know. And also like being, like going through like these sort of traumatic life altering decisions and experiences that you imposed on yourself in a lot of ways. It's something else. Uh, it's something else. It's really something else. And the ending of it is like horrific, but also beautiful. I feel like the only way to talk about it is to tell you that I've, 
I like I've experienced the same things that the characters on screen were experiencing and I've like been there and like that is kind of huge. It's just like by the end of the movie, there was this sort of overwhelming sense of like no longer thinking about it where I was just like, yes, absolutely. Like everything the movie was throwing at me, I was saying, yes, absolutely. This is yes. And I didn't even know why on an intellectual level, I couldn't explain to you why I was agreeing with the movie so well and why the movie was sitting so well with me, but it just was. And it was for these very specific purposes that I later kind of sat down and parsed out, but really actually sitting in there was something else. And I got really pretty pissed and angry when I got out of the theater and literally everybody in the theater hated it and was talking shit. And then I go online and everybody's talking shit constantly. I hate the internet. I hate the internet. Every time something is like really profoundly strong to me, like, I gotta, I, I end up finding that hot take where people's like, people are like, hey, this is really actually very bad. And then everybody jumps on it and comes up with all these like bullshit rules for how movies are supposed to be. And then how movies that don't fit within that very mold, like should be chastised because they don't fit within that mold. And it's like such like bullshit traditionalism. And like, I hate it. It's a wonderful movie and you should see it because it's wonderful and great and sad and horrific but powerful and strong and it will leave you truly truly cold in a way that a lot of movies don't anyway let's move on oh get out of there Upgrade is the new Lee Winnell movie. Uh, now, Lee Winnell and I have like a kind of weird relationship because I've dunked on Lee Winnell a lot in the past because I, I don't know if I like dislike his movies. In the past, I have disliked his movies, but I also think that his movies are kind of great in the same way that I, I find like a lot of like middling movies to be great. I think that his ideas are always on point. He always brings a lot of his A-game as far as his like ideas uh, and this movie is is wonderful because it's literally his ideas coming to their perfect fruition in the most strange but also enjoyable way. Like, they're very tactile. Like, the second third of the movie is just pure love for me. Like, watching that movie was joy and, like, excitement and shock and just amazement at both what was happening on screen and the creative decisions. And like, even as far as it like navigates culture, it's like a lot of things in this movie. And it's just like a sci-fi movie with a very straightforward concept, but like, holy shit. You can tell where it's going pretty quickly because if you've ever like read a story before, uh, it's a story, guys, um, and people really hate that when they're like, I don't know where this, I want to I wanna never know where a movie is going. Like, I don't know, I experience way too many stories to like ever be in a position where I legitimately don't know where a movie is going. I knew where it was going, I was pretty down for it to go there, it did go there, and I, I applauded in the theater. That's not true, I didn't applaud in the theater, I just smiled like a doofus. But if Lee Winnell would have been there, I would have applauded in the theater. And Lee Winnell, if you're watching this, good job. I love your movies. I love them now. This movie made me change my opinion on Lee Winnell because it made me realize that like all of his ideas are really, really great. And I probably am totally just being an asshole. I probably am an asshole. Let's move on. You didn't know that I'm a ninja. <clears throat> While I am state-of-the-art, I am not a ninja. Okay, so there's this Netflix movie called Cam uh, that kind of got around. Uh, a few people saw it. It's about a cam girl uh, who falls into a problem where she's no longer identifying with the person that she is on screen. As At least that's how it is in abstraction, but in practical nature it's very like twin peaksy where it's like she has a doppelganger that's running her cam girl site and she can't log into her account to delete it so it's like loss of identity that comes with being an internet persona 
um, or an internet creator. And, and that's something that I have personally struggled with. Like, I feel like very, very many of my videos, when I watch them back, it legitimately looks like I'm watching a different person that isn't me, uh, that has nothing to do with my life, that just happens to look and sound exactly like me, saying words that I would never say, and I don't understand how that's possible. I'm gonna make an entire video about this because this has been like a really fascinating experience, but like Cam is super good. It's super good. It's very suspenseful, it's very strong, and like the ending of it, the oh my God, the ending of it. When you're sitting there just, just like, trying your best not to bite your hands off while you're watching it because it's so intense. Watch this movie, watch it twice. I have, and I'm planning on a third watch and I'm gonna make a dang video about it. So you better get out there and you better watch it. Damn it. Hereditary uh, is a movie that I do not need to say any words about because I already have a gigantically long little video that I put together uh, about my thoughts on Hereditary. And my thoughts have changed in the sense that I think the movie is very, very clearly about fatalism and about how, like, there... I knocked over my bat! Some things are predetermined. Uh, not necessarily, like, one's mental illness or something. I don't think the movie is very strongly semiotically about mental illness. I think that there is spatterings of that, but I think mostly the movie is about free will and destiny and, and the sort of codependent relationship we have with our family history and how that very often informs the way we turn out. And it's like, is our death even, like, basically planned? Did we inherit that? Uh, it's possible. Did we inherit our all of our problems from our family? You know, maybe. But the ideas of like maybe or maybe not having free will because so much is determined by our upbringing uh, has a lot to say. But also it's like our upbringing doesn't really have an awful lot of relevance to the fact that many of us have to make pretty strong choices at some point. Some of us make pretty horrific mistakes. That's something that has to go on the previous generation too. So the previous generation and the current generation both have to kind of deal with the fact that both of them are changing in opposite directions, even though they had the same originating point. There's a lot going on in Hereditary and I really like it. Also that 15 minutes, ooh, I've rewatched the movie and that 15 minutes and you know what I'm talking about is just goddamn it the freakiest thing ever. Hey Cash, how much longer I gotta wait for my money? God made this land for all of us. Greedy people like you wanna hog it to yourself and your family and- Me and my family? Yeah. Cash is I'm your fucking uncle. Sorry to bother you. Um, okay, there has been some discourse online about this, I guess, but it's Boots Riley's directorial debut, and it, uh, fucking owns. It fucking owns. It's the best movie. I don't know. It's, it's on, on an ideal level. It brings all these weird abstract ideas that also totally make socio-political con, like, sense, and, ah, uh, Mm, it's good. The characterization is great. The idea of, like, the loss of one's soul in, in, like, the corporate world. Ah, I've lived it. Y'all, it's true. But the thing is, like, even on an artistic side, is, like, who you're actually crafting your stuff for, because it's, like, a certain, certain sort of, like, capitalistic idea, um, where the, the people in the movies, uh, like, they're artists, and they have to craft their entire like identity around the idea of selling their art if they're going to be successful, which often means they're subtracting all of their actual like artistic drive to make something sort of corporate-y. Uh, and it's just sort of how like, not only is the corporate world corporate and soul sucking, but literally all industry is that way. And also the world is that way. And also like, it's just kind of a part of living in this country. It's not just losing your soul, it's also losing your body and it's, it's the apocalypticism of something horrifically bad is going to happen to you, but you should just accept and own it because it doesn't even take all that much time for people to just adapt to these awful, terrible things. And it's like, there are horse people in the movie and 
like the idea is that a corporation is trying to convince people that when they become horse people, it's actually cool to be horse people. And they hire a black guy to be a, cor a, a horse person so that everybody's like, hey, a cool black guy chose to be a horse person. It's fucking amazing, guys. Oh, yeah. All right. building than what you can see, Doctor. You are living with dangerous people. Suspiria, I already made a vlog, so you kind of already get the sense of it, but um, the more I think about it, the more I absolutely love it uh, in a completely genuine way and with no caveats, really. Uh, it's just a good-ass movie that's just good-ass. And it has a beautiful, beautiful score that I've listened to a lot of times. I like how unpredictable both the shooting style and the editing style are if we're talking about the way that, like, the craft of the movie, but also, like, on an ideological level, I feel like I'm thinking about it a lot. And maybe this is gonna turn into a longer thing where I, I feel like I, I develop some sort of intense take at some point, but right now my intense take is that I think that it's a great analysis of like sort of the, the weird political divide of s sort of this dance academy and like the nuances of why people think both on an emotional and like a spiritual level why they think the things they, they do. And also it's very, very much my aesthetic. I don't know if you've seen me lately. You guys ever watch Shark Week? I don't even know what to say because really, truly, this is one of the holy shit movies of the year. Not only was like the entire cast super living for it, but like every second of the movie, I was like, wow. Especially the ending, like the last like 30 to 45 minutes, it goes beyond its concept and just becomes like a chaos movie, like a disaster movie, but it's a disaster movie starring a giant shark. There's people on a beach and they're all being attacked by the shark and it's like chaos, but it's my kind of chaos where it's like just nonsense being thrown at you uh, left and right constantly. It's almost like whiplash. Like I feel like the majority of the people in the theater didn't even know how to take it because it was so intensely absurd. I feel like that was the closest to having like a legitimate heart attack in the theater that I had this year. Uh, watching the ending of The Meg and trying really hard to breathe because I was both laughing very hard and also shocked and when I say I was laughing, I wasn't making fun of the movie. I was like on board. Like I could see what the movie was doing and I was like, I see you and it's genius and I love it. Dwight from The Office basically plays Elon Musk and uh, it just dunks on him like constantly and it is so satisfying and I don't get why people hate this movie because it's so amazing. <laughs> I didn't want to fuck up your shot. So what you gonna do with that thing? I'm going hunting. So what you hunting? It's crazy evil. Mandy is a movie that I am going to say next to nothing about because there is definitely a video coming um, because I have way too much to say. I went to film school and I was miserable most of the time in film school. And I've also been kind of miserable coming out of film school because I'm like, I feel like I'm like contained within this box of like how everything has to be and how everything has to be made and all of that. Something that Mandy made me realize is that that whole box and everything in it is bullshit and stupid and not something that I need to have in my world. Like it literally changed my life because I left that movie feeling like I could actually legitimately do anything I wanted and get away with it because literally why does anyone else's opinion even matter remotely? And art should be expression and it should be expression in whatever way I feel necessary. Like Mandy, ah, uh, it's my favorite movie of the year, easily. Easily. And it's also the most essential for me. I needed to see Mandy and I didn't know that I needed it as bad as I needed it. But um, thanks, Panos. You, you're my dad.
the Netflix Death Note adaptation is kind of awesome and I will fight you. I love that it's like a, a disintegration of the original Death Note series by way of Americanizing and then like <sighs> bastardizing its ideas in like a way that's um, confrontational. It made the fanboys mad, but on purpose and it was awesome actually. I, I predict there's going to be a video coming out by someone that isn't me that's going to uh, analyze why that movie owns. And I met Adam Wingard years and years ago and we sat down and just talked about whatever. I don't know, I get his ethos a lot and I feel like I defend him a lot because I feel like truly he is making great, 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 great movies that people arbitrarily complain about and like they're missing the point, they're missing the forest for the trees because I feel like his movies actually are really cleverly disintegrating a lot of stuff that needs to be disintegrated while also being really visceral and really entertaining. And I feel like Death Note is basically that. The only thing is like Death Note is something where there's so much protection, where people are protecting it so much that they're literally unwilling to engage with the fact that he's basically making the same sort of ideological basis, like the same sort of ideological decisions that he was making in like You're Next and The Guest and stuff like that. But like now he's just doing it with a property that people care about and suddenly people are pissed. And I get that. And people are gonna be mad at me in the comments. Of course they are, but I fucking loved it. I fucking loved it. What they want is a god. So let's give it to them. I don't talk a lot at school, but if people talk to me and stuff, they'd find out that I'm like really funny and cool and talkative. By the way, I like your shirt a lot. It's like so cool. What? Eighth Grade is um, a beautiful, beautiful movie by Bo Burnham um, that I didn't, I didn't know that Bo Burnham was um, this cinematically capable. Okay, that's not true. Okay, Bo Burnham has given me more than one uh, comedy special that drastically um, made me rethink things, which I don't think that many people are going to share that take. I don't even remember which ones, but it was like the last comedy special he did. Uh, the ending of it is very profoundly affecting, and it was in that moment that I realized that he kind of had cinematic sensibilities, but then actually watching his movie was ridiculous because eighth grade is like a horror movie that ends in this very, very, very cathartic emotional moment that I feel like I needed someone to say to me in my life, but no one ever said to me. It was like as if Bo Burnham was my dad and my dad was telling me the thing that I'd always wanted to hear my dad say. Maybe that's cut into the core of me a little bit too deep. Maybe I'm being a little bit too front, um, upfront with my uh, emotional experience, but that was really powerful and I did not expect that to happen. So, <sighs> eighth grade is really fucking good. There's a scene where um, the girl's like gonna go to the pool and swim with these other girls and like she sees herself as not being pretty because you know she has an untraditional body type or something like that. And um, the girls in the pool are all like traditionally, you know, N n normal, whatever. So she just has this like intense disassociation in order to actually do it. And honestly, I feel, I feel that. I feel that all the goddamn time. I feel that all the goddamn time, um, even right now, because like going on camera and doing this has become difficult. It's become harder and harder and harder as, as time has passed. And people will, will tell you that like YouTube becomes easier as you get more and more popular, but truthfully, it gets harder and harder because now, like every time I do it, I am like really putting myself out there in this very blunt way that's like, I have to deal with the fact that this is me and this is, and I'm out there like this. And, um, you know, and I'm not traditionally beautiful in the way that a lot of people on YouTube are. And I, I, I'm i not traditionally, like my speech pattern isn't traditional and my attitude isn't traditional. And, you know, my, my stuff doesn't generate the clicks. It doesn't generate the views in the way that a lot of people's stuff does. And 
in a way, I think that's good because I'm terrified of the attention um, because I feel like truly, I, I kind of feel like I don't deserve it. And I also feel like I'm scared of, of it. Um, wow, I'm really getting real right now. <sighs> um, what was I talking about? Eighth grade, eighth grade. I don't know. She's a YouTuber in the movie and she's trying really, really desperately to just continue putting stuff out um, that, that has some sort of reflection on her life, which is true um, because everything that I make has some sort of direct reflection on my life and like my mental state when I'm making it. And it's, it's surreal to see that on screen in such an accurate way, but also it made me really sit back and think about what I'm doing here. And it makes me worry that that this is fleeting and I shouldn't do it because maybe it's a, maybe it's hurting me or maybe whatever. But I've decided in my life that I want to be a brave person. I want to continue to be a brave person and I want to put myself out there in, in the way that I deserve. And I also deserve respect and I deserve attention and I deserve these things because I, damn it, I'm a good person and I, I work hard to have that. And I've had a lot of bad people around in my life and I've had a lot of people take advantage of me and I've had a lot of situations that I just wish were different. Um, but now that I'm here and I'm doing this and I'm in front of this camera, I'm comfortable, but it's, it's hard to get me to sit down and do this because I get very, very scared. And I'm tired of being scared. I'm tired of being scared. I know I'm not like everybody else, but maybe that's good. Um, maybe that's good. Anyway. Okay, so, uh, wow, <laughs> I got really real there for a minute. Um, now time to hop back into YouTuber mode. Okay, what do we do? Like, comment, and subscribe on this video if you uh, liked this video, and you've liked my videos. I never say like, comment, subscribe on anything ever, and I wonder if that actually has some sort of impact on my, on my views. So like, comment, and subscribe, and I'm gonna test it. Um, there's this one YouTuber, I can't remember his name, but he's like, you gotta give this video 40,000 likes or I'm gonna die. So, um, you need to give this video 40,000 likes or I'm gonna die. There are more movies that I saw this year that I would like love to talk about, but I, I don't know. I'm kind of like needing to, uh, to take a breather here and call it for the day. Um, if you like my videos a lot and you care about what I'm doing or you think what I'm doing is, is valuable or important, um, I have good news and that is that I'm gonna be doing more of it and I'm I'm gonna be doing it louder and prouder than ever before and that is a decision and a commitment that I'm making right now. I have a couple videos that are pretty big that I've been working on and I can't wait to put them out. I also have a documentary that I'm kind of working on but scared to finish and I'm tired of being scared of it. I'm just gonna finish it. I'm gonna finish it and I'm gonna put it out and it's gonna be awesome and y'all are gonna freak out because it's so, intense. Um, a lot of the stuff that happened on the last couple of days of us making that thing ended up being really, really emotionally intense. And that's kind of why I've been struggling to get it done. Um, because I'm, I'm scared of looking at the footage, but I'm not scared of looking at it anymore because I'm going to sit down and I'm going to do it because I'm powerful and I can do this shit. More stuff, more good stuff, uh, intense, big stuff. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Let's, let's fucking go. Let's fucking do this, right? Second thing, if you like and appreciate my con content, uh, consider supporting me on Patreon because, blah, consider supporting me on Patreon because Patreon uh, is directly funding my ability to do this stuff and also my life. I live in an apartment now and I like need to pay for food and all of these things and like, it would be very, very cool if you would support me on Patreon. And over the last couple months, because things have been kind of dour, I have lost a lot of people and it would be super cool to get that sort of back up and running. But anyway, you will see more complicated and interesting content from me very soon because I want to do it and I cannot wait to start working on it. So thank you guys for watching. I 
fucking love you. I fucking love you. Go check out my new album, which is out of, it should be available today. It should be available now. Um, go check it out. There will be a link in the description. Oh my God, I have so much to tell you at the back end of this video. It's ridiculous. God, I'm excited. I can't wait. I can't wait to see you again. I can't wait. I can't wait to see you again and give you something that's truly going to make you feel special and truly going to be amazing. I can't wait. I cannot wait. I love you. Goodbye.